In the northwest of England, there are over 2,000 square kilometers of rolling hills and deep water basins, all of which make up the stunning Lake District National Park. Tonight, we're going to one of its most southerly lakes, Coniston Water. It's a river lake, a soft S-shaped stretch of water in the bottom of a deep glaciated valley. Eventually, Coniston water will drain away to the sea with winding rivulets and icy tributaries cutting through hills and villages and stretches of land unaccustomed to anyone but sheep. Today, we start instead at the northern end of the lake on a short wooden pier known as Waterhead. To your left, people heave kayaks up onto the shingle and out of the water. Across the lake, a ferry passes by, a soft honk of the horn getting lazy boaters out of the way. Teenagers wrestle with knots on sailboats as their instructors watch from afar. It's a glorious summer evening and although it's a little busy right here, you know the perfect place tucked away between the trees, a little farther away, a spot which is much quieter and perfect to get out onto the lake. You walk a little further along the shore, and there, as if it were waiting just for you, is a small wooden sailing dinghy with its nose just touching the water. Her red weather-worn sail is up, but loose, and the boom sways slightly in the breeze. She's ready for you. A gentle push and you're away, moving through the water.
gentle wind fills the sail, moving you out into the open lake. It's just enough to move you along at an effortless pace. A little manoeuvring of the tiller to make sure you're going in the right direction and away you go, sailing off gently into the middle of the lake, away from the dispersing crowds and families on the pier and out, heading south to where you are the only person on the water. Further out into the lake, you can see on the easterly side a white house perched at the top of a grassy verge. It's an L-shaped property and jutting out to overlook the water is a little glass window turret with a green copper pointed roof. This house is Brantwood, and it used to belong to the great Victorian poet, artist and conservationist, John Ruskin. He built the turret in the late 19th century for spectacular views south, west and north of the lake. Right now, the sun is beginning to set, catching the windows of the turret and casting them and the crest of the waves around your boat in a magical golden glow. Dream lofty dreams, Ruskin wrote, and as you dream, so shall you become. You feel a gentle rocking forward as the wind catches in your sail once again. Ahead, an outcropping of land juts away from the eastern banks of the lake, Fir Island. Although it's only at high tide or when the rain has lifted the lake levels above their banks that the water seeps across the brim and cuts the little blot of woodland off from the main shore. Right now, the path is gone. Tree canopies hang low, leaves just touching the water.
He let the boat veer close enough to watch, just for a moment, but then pull around and back to the centre of the lake to catch a larger gust. There's a bigger and better island to explore a little further along. This is Peel Island. Peel is larger than fair and it sticks out a good way from the eastern shore of the lake. It is from above a tear shape with a round north facing nose which you approach and a thinner pointed southerly end. This is where the secret harbour lies. There are some rocky outcroppings on the northerly face of the island, all of which are mossy and covered in fingerlings of tree roots. Certainly not somewhere you'd want to dock your boat, and certainly not somewhere you'd find it easy to clamber out ashore. You keep going, a little gust of wind pushing you further to the west. As you round the island along the far side, just behind some trees, a little inlet appears. It is here in the crux of the V-shaped woodland, a little shingle beach emerges into view, the island's natural secret harbour. The nose of your boat is just hidden in the shade, under the canopies of the wind-bent birch tree branches. But the aft end is catching the last rays of the evening sun. Your boat is pulled in close to the shore. You loosen her knots and the sail slackens, fluttering in the breeze. The water looks inviting, and after only a moment's pause, you pull off your shoes and socks, push the boom aside, and flop your feet over the edge of the boat.
around your shins and ankles, the water is cool and refreshing. For a moment, you lay still. There are birds on the island, somewhere behind you, calling to one another in the setting sun. The water laps softly upon the boat's wooden sides. You're at peace and quietly begin to drift off to sleep.